I just want to welcome everyone to our family night of prayer. And I certainly pray that everyone is doing well and staying safe. And also praying that you are um, going by the guidelines of the CDC so that we all stay safe. You know, we, we all miss you desperately. We want to see you and get together for worship and praise. But we can keep this in mind, that each day we're getting closer and closer to when we're going to come together and fill the sanctuary and just praise and glorify and magnify the name of the Lord. Um, that day is coming. Can somebody say amen? I can't wait till it happen. So we're going to get started. And um, I'm going to open up with a scripture out of 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 13. And I'm going to read this from the New Living Translation. Excuse me, it's verse 13. It says, as for us, we can't help but thank God for you, dear brothers and sisters loved by the Lord. We are always thankful that God chose you to be among the first to experience salvation. A salvation that came through the Spirit who makes you holy and through your belief in the truth. He called you to salvation when, when we told you the good news. Now you can share in the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. With all these things in mind, dear brothers and sisters, stand fast and keep a strong grip on the teaching we passed on to you both in person and by letter. Now may the Lord Jesus Christ himself and God of our Father, who loved us and by his grace gave us eternal comfort and a wonderful hope, comfort you and strengthen you in every good thing you do and say praise the Lord. I was reading um, Thessalonians, Second Thessalonians a couple of weeks ago, and, and um, it was just blessing my heart to read it. But there was two words that were, that were here that kind of like stuck in my heart. And the, it's in verse 15 where Paul said, stand firm. And Paul used those same two words in 1 Corinthians 16 and 13. He said this here. He said, be on guard, stand firm in the faith, be courageous, be strong, and do everything with love. Praise the Lord. He said, stand firm in the faith. Stand firm and keep a strong grip on the teaching we passed on to, to you. Paul spoke these words to the Thessalonian Christians that were there because he knew that they were going to have challenges ahead as being Christians or believers. He knew that things were ahead that was going to rock their boat and cause things to happen in their life. But the thing about it was that this letter wasn't just for the Christians then, but it's also for the believers now. It's for you and I where we are right now. Paul knew that they would face uh, um, pressure uh, uh, from persecutions. He knew that there would be false teachers and, and the world pulling at them from every angle. He knew that there would be temptations and, and trials and tribulations and many other things that would certainly pull us or any one of us away from the Lord. But he reminded them this here. He said that, that they had been chosen by God from the beginning for salvation through sanctification of the Spirit and their, and their belief in the truth. Paul was passing on to them the teachings of Jesus Christ because he knew that those teachings from, from Jesus would take us through anything that we go through in life. But now today, uh, um, we have the Old Testament and the New Testament, and it's the written word of God. If you remember in 2 Timothy 3 and 16, Paul says this here. He says, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man slash woman of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Um, everything that we need in life is in the word of God. The word of God has to abide in each and every one of us. It has to be written in our hearts that we may not sin against the Lord. We need this word because it brings us through anything that life may throw at any one of us. If you remember, Jesus said in John 15 and 7, he said that if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask 
what you desire and it shall be done for you. We have to stand firm on the word of God. Regardless of what's going on around us, we have to stand firm. No matter how hard the wind may blow, we've got to stand firm in God's word. We don't want to be like Peter. And you remember Peter when he walked on water in Matthew 14 and verse 22 through 33. You remember the story when Jesus had sent them over to the other side of the lake and while they went over the uh, while he sent them over to the lake he went up to the mountain and prayed but on their way over to the other side of the lake a windstorm came the wind was blowing and the waves were rising and it was getting into the boat these boys were at a place where they were fearful for their lives because it was so much wind and so much happening at that time they were probably thinking in their mind we don't know if we're going to make this or not but even as they had that thought Jesus walked on the water out there where they were and he said to them to calm them at that time he said don't be afraid take Take courage I am here and then after he said that Peter said if it is you command me to come to you on the water you know the story Jesus said come and Peter got out of the boat and he walked on the water but in verse 29 it says this here it says so Peter went over the side of the boat and walked on the water toward Jesus but when he saw the strong wind and the waves he was terrified and began to sink. And he said, save me, Lord. And he shouted, he shouted, save me, Lord. And Jesus immediately reached out and grabbed him. You have so little faith. Jesus said, why did you doubt me? I believe that Peter was walking on God's word and had his eyes on Jesus while he was walking on the word and walking towards the Lord. He needed to keep his eyes on the Lord and staying on the word. But when he saw the wind and he saw the waves, his eyes were moved from God or from the Lord to the, to the waves. I believe that that's what's happening now and happening today in the form of the coronavirus. It's rocking the boats of, of many right now. People are drinking more alcohol the, out, the level of drinking alcohol has gone up. The stress levels have gone up, as well as depression and as well as suicide and financial issues and a host of many other things that folks are dealing with right now that's causing some folks to take their eyes off of Jesus. And I want to say this here to you. Do not take your eyes off the one who is greater than the windstorm, the one who is greater than vi the virus, the one who is greater than sickness and, and disease and problems or any storms that may blow our way. The one who is greater. The one who is greater than any temptation or, or tribulation that we may go through. Don't take your eyes off him. He's the one that can bring us through. But, but think about this here. When we take our eyes off of him, what are we doing? We are doubting him and doubting his power. But he has the power to bring us through anything that we may go through. That's why Paul was saying to these Christians, he was saying, stand firm and keep strong grip, a strong grip on the teaching that we have taught you and passed on to you of Jesus Christ. All believers, we are going through things right now. We're going through issues right now. But the thing about it is that the scripture says that we should count it as joy. I know that's not an easy thing to do, to say all the stuff that is happening right now, I can count it as joy. But if we're going to stand on the scripture, and the scripture tells us to count it as joy, this is what James says in James 1 and 2. He said, my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect, perfect, and complete, lacking nothing. So what am I saying to you? I'm saying we need the Word of God, because God's Word can bring us through anything. What else am I saying? I'm saying to stand firm on your prayers, because there's power in standing firm in your prayers. In James 5.16, it says the effective fervent prayer of a righteous man does what? Avails much. What else? 
We stand firm on the word of God, no matter what. There is power in the word, but there's also transformation in the word. But we have to stand firm in the word of God. It's not going to rock on us. It's not going to crack on us. It's not going to break up under our feet. It's a solid word. It's a firm foundation. God's word. And we have to stand on it. What does Isaiah say in 55, 11? He says, so, forth, so shall my word that God that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. What else do we need to do? We need to stand firm on his promises. Why? Because there is power in standing on the promise of the Lord. God fulfills his promise because he's a promise keeper. Numbers chapter 23 and 19 says, God is not a man that he should lie, nor son of man that he should repent. Has he said, and will he not do? Or has he spoken, and will he not make it good? We stand on God's word. We stand firm on it. Not only that, but when we stand firm on the word and on his promises, we cause others and encourage others to stand firm on the very same things. Why? Because we know that God will bring us through whatever wind, whatever storm, whatever virus, whatever trial, whatever tribulation that we are going through, if we stand firm, God will bring us through no matter what. Let me close with this verse here. First Chronicles, excuse me, First Corinthians chapter 16, verse 13. I read it earlier. Paul said, be on guard. Stand firm in the faith. Be courageous. Be strong. And do everything with love. Praise the Lord. And that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to stand firm on our prayers tonight. Can somebody say amen? Let's begin to worship the Lord. Don't so much listen to me and watch me, but I ask you to just begin to worship the King of kings and the Lord of lords, the Lord of glory, our God, our King, our Master. So let's begin. Just begin to worship Him. Just begin to sing before Him. Just begin to give Him glory. Just begin to give Him honor. Just begin to give Him praise because all praise and honor is due to our King and our Lord. Father, we come this mo tonight and we come to worship You. We come to praise You. We come to glorify You. We come to magnify Your name, God. We come to give You glory and honor and praise where glory and honor and praise is due God we come to bow before you O Lord we come to sing praises to our God and praises to our King uh, King of Kings and Lord of Lords we come to bless you God in spite of the virus O Lord in spite of all that's going on in spite of the things that are happening in our lives and in this nation God we come to bless and to praise our God and our King we come to worship you Lord and spirit God and in truth O Lord we come to worship you, God, with clean hands and a pure heart, God, and giving you glory and honor and praise and worship, God. Lord God, we will bless the Lord at all times, and your praises shall continue to be in our mouth. I say tonight, oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together, because our God is worthy. Our God is worthy of it all. Our God is worthy of all praise. Our God is worthy of all glory, and he is worthy of all honor. There will not be a rock or a, or a stone that will worship God in my place or in our place. We will worship him for ourselves because our God has been too good and faithful to each and every one of us. When we were faithless and have been faithless, God, you have been faithful to each. You remain faithful to each and every one of us, God. And we are forever grateful and thankful, God. We shall praise you in morning, noon, and night from the rising of the sun till it's going to it's going down. The name of the Lord shall and will be praised because our God is worthy, worthy of it all. The praise, the glory, and the honor. Your word says, let everything that have breath do what? Praise the Lord. We praise you, Jesus, and we worship you, and we bless you, God, with all that's within us, God. Lord, your word says, to enter your gates with thanksgiving and into your courts with praise and to be thankful to you and bless your holy name. We bless you. We praise you. We glorify you. And we magnify your name. 
O worthy is he who sit on the throne. O worthy is our Lord and worthy is our Savior. We bless you today, God. Father, we stand with the heavenly host, O God, tonight and give you glory and give you honor and give you worship, O Lord. You inhabit the praises of your people, God. And we praise you, Jesus, with our understanding and in our heavenly language. You are worthy, God. Father, tonight, Lord, as we talked about, Lord, and what Paul had said, God, he said to stand firm. And, Father, we are your people, God. Yes, the winds are blowing. Yes, the virus is here. Yes, there's various things that are happening, God. Yes, Lord, the economy is being shaken, shaken and rocked, Lord, and, and some of our boats are being rocked, O oh Lord. But, Father, we're going to stand firm in your word and in your promises, God. Because, Lord, they will be fulfilled, God. Lord, our souls are anchored in you, God. Our lives are anchored in you, Lord. Father, in every way, God, there is no better place to be than to be anchored with you and connected with you, God. Lord, because you know what you're doing, God. We may not understand everything, God, but, Lord, our trust is in you and in you alone, God. So, Father, today, Lord, Lord, forgive us where we've messed up. Forgive us where we weren't standing firm. Forgive us, oh Lord, where we, we made you lower than you should have been, God, because of a situation or this situation in our lives, God. Forgive us, oh God, that we made you small, oh Lord, when you are a great big God, when the word says that heaven is your throne and the earth is your footstool, God, and we made you smaller than that. Forgive us, Lord. But today, God, we are acknowledging who you are, that heaven is your throne and the earth is your footstool, God. And every problem and situation that we may have, oh Lord, is under your feet, God. So, Father, we thank you, Lord, and we're going to stand. And we're going to keep standing. No matter how long the winds blow, we're going to stand. Because we are anchored in you, God, and in you alone. And not only that, we are anchored together, God. And we're going somewhere in you, oh Lord. And we are right in the palms of your hands. You're in charge and you're in control. And God, we trust you more than ever. We trust you with everything. So Holy Spirit, come and lead and come and guide us in all things. Lord, your word calls us to pray for our nation, God. And for, Father, we will pray for our nation. First of all, we thank you for this great nation that we live in, God. Lord, that you are Lord of this nation, God. And so Father, today... Lord, as the scripture said, let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace in a time of need. And Father, we cry out to you, Lord, and on behalf of this nation, we need you, Lord. We need you more than ever before, God. And we cry out as a nation and as a people, Lord. We need you, God. We need your grace. We need your, your mercy, God. We humble ourselves before you, God, and ask, O oh Lord, for divine intervention, Lord, in this nation, God. We need you, Lord, and we cry out, O oh God. We need you to move like never before. We pray that you would move on the hearts of the folks, of people of this nation, God, as you see fit, Lord. And, Father, even as we pray this, O oh Lord, we ask and we seek your face, O oh Lord. Pray and seek your face, Lord. Lord, that you will forgive this nation, Lord, for its sins, O oh Lord, and the wickedness, O oh Lord, that have come against you, God. For the sins of this nation, Lord, where they walked away. We walked away from you, God, and picked up other idols and gods, O oh Lord, and made you small, O oh Lord. But you're not a small God. You're a great God. Forgive us, Lord. Wash us and cleanse this nation, God, from all unrighteousness, Lord. Turn our hearts to you, Lord, more than ever before. Turn the leaders' hearts to you, God, like never before, God. We are crying out, God, heal our land. Our land needs healing, God. It's only you that can heal our land. We cry out, heal our land. And move on our behalf, O oh God, in the name of Jesus, God. Father, we intercede, O oh Lord, for those who are in authority, God, of this nation, our president, our vice president, every member of Congress, God, the Supreme Court judges, Lord. 
Father, we pray that you would give them divine wisdom, Lord, and direction and much grace, God. We pray a hedge of protection around them and their families, O oh Lord, in every way, God. And Father, we stand as one tonight in the name of Jesus, and we come against the works of darkness over our nation, over our leaders, over our state, and over our, our cities, and over our schools, and over our homes in the name of Jesus. We come against lawlessness right now in our state, in our country, in our, in our city in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray right now, God, Lord, that you will bring an end to this pandemic, O oh Lord. We pray, Lord, that your hand will move across this nation, God, like never before, God. Uh, Father, we cry out to you, move on our behalf, O oh Lord. And Father, again, we speak to the enemy. We command you, Satan, your cohorts to abort your mission right now in the name of Jesus. And Father, we are praying, O oh Lord, for a move of God like we've never seen before. Father, we pray, Lord, that you would turn the economy around of this nation, God. We pray also, Lord, that those that are looking for, looking for jobs and lost their jobs, Lord, that they will be rehired, God, in the name of Jesus. And we pray that you will prosper this nation, God, like never before, God, that it is known that the King of kings and the Lord of lords has done this. This is not the hand of man. This is the hand of God. Lord, you are a sovereign God and can do whatever you choose to do. And our trust is in you and in you alone. And Father, we also lift up the 2020 elections, O oh Lord. Father, we pray, Lord, for this election. The time shall come where we need to go to the voting booth and begin to vote for a new president. So, Father, we pray that as that time comes, that we are praying and seeking your face in every way. Father, that when we enter that voting booth, that the Holy Spirit shall certainly speak to our hearts and who we should vote for, that the man or the person that you've chosen to be leader of this country shall be the leader of this country. Father, we thank you, Lord, and praise you, God. We also pray tonight, Lord, that, that our mayors and governors that are right now, Lord, trying to figure out and put things and plans together, and how to reopen the state and reopen the cities. But Lord, give them much wisdom and direction, God. Father, we pray that we not open prematurely, God, but certainly be led by your spirit, O oh Lord, in every way. Father, we do thank you. We do praise you. We do glorify you. For you are worthy of all praise. You are worthy of all glory. You are worthy of all honor. We praise you, Lord. We bless you, Jesus. We glorify you, God, in everything, God. Our hearts worship you. Our hearts praise you. Our hearts glorify you because you are worthy. We give praise. We give glory. We give honor to you and to you alone. King of kings. King of glory, we bless you and praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. As the man of God was just bringing forth the word, there's a song that the Holy Spirit put in my spirit. I'm not a worshiper. I love to make a joyful song, joyful sound to my Savior. And the song says, I have made you too small in my eyes. Oh, Lord, forgive me. I have believed in the lies of the world that you are unable to help me. But now, oh Lord, I see I'm wrong. Draw my heart and show yourself strong. I need my heart, I need my song. Oh Lord, be my 
magnify. O Lord, be magnified. Be magnified, O Lord. You are highly exalted, and there is nothing you can do oh lord my eyes on you be magnified oh lord be magnified even in this moment, the whole world, we're talking about COVID. And our focus, including myself, I've shifted a little from God. And we focus on whatever it is that is going on. But the Bible in, this, uh, in the book of 1 Peter 5, 8, tells us that we should be well balanced we should always be an alert because our enemy, who is the devil, roams around like a roaring lion looking for his prey, looking for who he's going to devour. That is what the enemy does. The enemy wants us to be distracted. The enemy wants us to focus on the situation that's going on around us. Yes, some of us have lost loved ones. Some of us have lost our job. Some of us are sick right now. But we know we serve a God that is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above what we can ever ask or imagine. God still heals. God still delivers. God is still in the miracle working business. His promises, like our pastor said earlier, is yes and amen. The Bible said, as he said a thing, that he will not bring it to pass. Our God is able. So as we come together tonight, oh God, to exalt him, to worship him, to put our focus on him, to take our focus off of what is going on around us and just focus on him and give him our worship, our praise tonight is a sacrifice. Give him that sacrifice of offering. He's going to move miraculously. He's going to turn things around for our own good. That situation, what is it that you are believing God for? God is faithful. God is able. So, Father, tonight we just continue to exalt you. Father, we continue to exalt you. We worship you. You are mighty. You are God. Father, Lord God, we could not thank you enough, King of glory. Father, we are here. We are alive. We are well tonight, oh God. Not because of how faithful we've been. Not because of how good we've been. Not because we've done everything the way you want us to do, oh God. But because of your mercy. Because of your love. Because of your faithfulness, oh God. Your word said your mercies are new every single morning, oh God. And every day, King of glory, you load us with benefits, oh God. There are so many benefits, oh God, that you have given us, oh God. That sometimes we forget about those things, oh God. And we focus on the things that we want to work and they are not working the way we want them to do, oh God. But your word said your ways are not our ways, oh God. You said as far as the heaven are higher than the earth, so are your ways, so are your thoughts. So are your covenant. So are your promise. Higher than us, O oh God. So tonight, King of glory, we've come to give you worship. We've come to give you praise. We've come with the fruit of our lips, O oh God, to exalt you, to adore you. We've come to sing hallelujah to your name. We've come to sing hosanna to the King of kings. We've come this night 
to join the elders and the 24 angels to cry holy, holy to the Lamb of God, holy to the King of Kings, holy to the Rock of Ages, holy to the I am that I am, holy to the resurrection and the life, O God, holy to the I am that I am, O God, holy to the soon coming King, O God. You are worthy to be praised, O God. You said in your word, hallelujah, you said from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, you said your name shall be praised, O God. And you even said, let everything, hallelujah, that has breath, King of glory, let them praise your name, hallelujah. And you remind us, O God, you said if no one will praise you, King of glory, you said you will raise up stones to give you praise. O King of glory, I do not want any stone to praise you in my presence, O God. Oh, Father, we thank you. We worship you. We have to be alive to praise you, O God, because the dead cannot praise you, O God. So while we are yet living, while we have the breath in our nostrils, O God, while we have the use of our mouth, O God, Father, we will exalt you. We will lift you up. We will worship you. We will give you all the highest praise, O God, because you deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. It, you deserve it. You are worthy. You are worthy. Hallelujah. Father, tonight, oh God, we've come on behalf of our families, oh God. Father, Lord God, your family, you, you have a plan and purpose, oh God, for our family, oh God. But some of us right now, tonight, oh God, our families are bleeding. Our families are in chaos. Our families are crying out, oh God. We have mothers that are crying out on behalf of their spouses, oh God. We have mothers that are crying out on behalf of their kids, oh God. The wayward kids, kids that have gone into the world, oh God. Father, Lord God, your word said there is nothing that is impossible for you to do. So tonight, oh God, we cry out, oh God, we lift up every family before you tonight, oh God. Father, there is nothing that you cannot do. So we cry out to you. We pray this evening, King of Glory, that you will begin to restore, oh God, those families that are shattered, oh God, those families that the enemy have destroyed, oh God. King of glory we pray because your word says you are God of restoration and there is nothing that you cannot do. We know that our enemy oh God, Satan came to kill, to steal and to destroy but you come to give us abundance of life. So tonight mighty king of glory we pray oh God that the spirit of restoration will begin to rest upon families tonight. That marriages are healed tonight in the name of Jesus. The situation that have been called hopeless oh God. You are bringing hope to them in the name of Jesus. Father, Lord God, even children, King of glory, will begin to respond and obey, oh God, and begin to listen to their parents more than ever before in the name of Jesus. Father, Lord God, we thank you because we know the marriages tonight, oh God, are, go are under attack, oh God. But Father, your word said we should resist the devil and he will flee from us, oh God. So tonight, oh God, we resist the enemy, oh God, in the name of Jesus. We pray for the spirit of understanding. We pray for communication. We pray for clarity, oh God, in homes tonight. We pray that your spirit, oh God, we begin to rest upon those situations, upon those homes, oh God. Even love, oh God, we begin to return into marriages in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We bless you. Tonight, King of Glory, we pray, oh God, for our kids, oh God, from the youngest to the oldest, oh God. Father, you are the one that created these kids. You know them more than we, hallelujah. You just loan them to us, oh God. So, Father, Lord God, you said we should pray, oh God, for them. And we should commit them into your hands. Because your word said, whatsoever it is that we commit into your hands, you are able to keep until that end. So, Father, tonight we lift up all of our kids to your throne of grace tonight. Some of them are in school. Some of them are working, oh God. But, Father, Lord God, there is nothing that you can not do. So tonight we pray for the excellent spirit, oh God. Your word said Daniel was a man of excellence and he excelled in all that he does. So tonight we pray that all of our kids will excel. Spiritually, King of glory. Physically, psychologically, mentally, oh God. That the excellent spirit of Daniel will be upon them in the name of Jesus. Father, Lord God, we pray that our kids, King of glory, will be like Joseph, oh God. That even when he was put in a situation 
situation that was uncomfortable. He looked up to you and said, I will not do this evil against my God. That the Spirit of God will resonate upon our kids, oh God. That they too, when they need to make a decision, when no one is there to tell them, do this or do that, that they will rely on the Spirit of God and they will choose right over evil in the name of Jesus. Father, Lord God, we thank you for favor upon them. We thank you for covering upon them. We thank you, King of Glory, that the association, King of Glory, if there's any association they are in right now, that they do not need to be in. Father, by your mercy and your grace, we separate them in the name of Jesus. We thank you, mighty God, that your covering is upon them, O God, that they will continue to do that which is pleasing in your sight all the days of their life. Father, for those who are working, we thank you for favor, because your word says you surround us with favor like a shield, O God. Father, we thank you for favor with their employer, favor with their friends, favor with everyone around them in the name of Jesus. Father, Lord God, for those that are going to school, most of them are going to school online, oh God. King of glory, we thank you that you will continue to manifest your power, your presence in them in the name of Jesus. Father, tonight, King of glory, we pray for those who are sick. Oh, King of glory, there are so many people who are sick right now. Some of them are not even sick because of COVID, but King of glory, we pray tonight, oh God, because your word said above all things you want us to prosper and be in health even as our soul prospered king of glory and your word said because of what you did at Calvary because of the blood that was shed at Calvary we have been healed we have been made old. it's not something that's going to happen it has already happened oh God so father tonight we pray that even right now for those under the sound of my voice king of glory that is in need of physical healing mental healing psychological healing, financial healing, any kind of healing that they need. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus that your healing virtue will begin to flow right now. There is no distance in prayer, mighty God, that even as they listen to me, Father, Lord God, let their faith rise up in them and let your healing virtue in the name of Jesus, let it begin to rise tonight in the name of Jesus. Oh, King of God, even those ones that are in situation that the doctor has given up on. Those ones that the doctor has said no more they can do for them. Father, we call upon you, O God, because it's not over until you say so. So, Father, tonight, O God, we raise the blood standard for them and we pray healing over them right now in the name of Jesus. Your word said the son of righteousness, we arise with healing in his wings, O God. So, tonight, O God, let your healing rise up for them, O God. Let your healing spring forth in the name of Jesus. Father, there are families, oh God, that they've lost their source of income. The father, the mother, they are not working and they look to you. Father, Lord God, your word said you are able to provide to all of our needs according to your riches in glory through Christ Jesus. Tonight, King of glory, we cry out and we pray, mighty God, that you begin to meet every need tonight in the name of Jesus. Your word said, hallelujah, that the gold is yours, the silver is yours, oh God. You said you own the cattle on a thousand hills, oh God. Is there anything that you cannot do? The answer is no, oh God. Father, Lord God, you, if you can raise a raven to feed Elijah, oh God, there is nothing that you cannot do because you are God of power. You are God of purpose. You are a miraculous God. So tonight, King of glory, we pray that help will rise up for those who are in need of help tonight. In the name of Jesus, Father, we bless you. Father, we adore you. Father, we honor you. Father, we thank you that even right now, even with the whole COVID thing that is going on in this world, oh God, Father, we look to you. We look to you. We thank you because this does not catch you by surprise, even though it catches us by surprise, oh God. But your word says you know the end from the beginning. So we trust you, oh God, that all things, oh God, not some things, all things, King of glory, we work out for our purpose, oh God. We work out for our good, oh God. You will use this cause with, oh God, for our purpose in the name of Jesus. Father, we bless you. Father, we adore you. We honor you. Be thou glorified, hallelujah. Have your way, Holy Spirit. Have your way, Holy Spirit. Have your way, King of glory. We honor you, God. Thank you tonight. 
thank you for answered prayer. Thank you for what you've done. Thank you for what you're doing. And thank you, King of glory, for what you are yet do. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Sister Kemi, for that powerful prayer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we give you praise. Lord, we exalt you, Lord. Lord, we magnify your holy name. You are awesome. Awesome is your name, O oh God. Awesome are your works, mighty God. We thank you, Lord, even as we continue, O oh God, in our worship, even as we continue in our praises, even as we continue in our thanksgiving to the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He is our rock of refuge. He is our strong tower. He is our ever-present help in the time of need. Glory be to your holy name, O God, in the name of Jesus. Family of God, let's continue in our prayer. We are praying for the body of Christ. We are praying for all believers all over the world at this time. We are asking, just like the scripture that was read earlier by the pastor in Thessalonians, that we will be strong, we will be firm, and we will be courageous in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Especially as we know that the times are evil, we need to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. We are asking that the people of God will come together in unity. We'll have the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because we know we have a common enemy and we have to be united in the spirit and in the physical in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, we ask, O oh God, that we will have one mind, O oh God, like you said. We have one mind and that mind will be the mind of Christ, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. So that Father God, even the things we are asking of and from you, will believe and be in agreement, O oh God. We are praying for agreement in the body of Christ, O oh God. Because when the people come together in agreement, O oh God, Bible says that any and everything we ask, O oh God, will be done for us by your Father in heaven. And even so, we come together and also ask, O oh God, for that coming together in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we know that it's not by power. It's not by might because, oh God, we are different, oh God, with our faces, oh God. But Lord, we come together because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, Lord, we ask, oh God, that the body of Christ will come together, oh God. That we will share with one another, oh God. That, Father God, will be connected in the Spirit, oh God. Mighty God, mighty God, we trust you. Mighty God, we look to you. Mighty God, we depend on you, O oh God. Have your way, O oh God, in the body of Christ, O oh God. Lord, as we pray for the body of Christ, O oh God, we pray for fruitfulness, O oh God. That we will bear fruit, O oh God. Because Jesus said, that tree that doesn't bear fruit will be cut off, O oh God. And you have commanded that we will bear fruit, O oh God. And that our fruit will abide. This is our prayer this night, O oh God, that we will be fruitful in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, we bear fruit, O oh God, in every area, O oh God, in our jobs, in our work, O oh God. Whatever we will do, you say we should do as unto the Lord, O oh God, that we will walk, O oh God, when it is day, O oh God. You say the night comes when no one will walk, O oh God. Therefore, Lord, help us to walk as unto you, O oh God, doing it with thanksgiving with all our hearts and, Father God, being happy when we do it, O oh God. Help us to be effective, O oh God. Effective in our prayer, O oh God. Effective in the house of God, O oh Lord. Even when we are not physically together, O oh God. But Father God, in what we decide to do, O oh God, may we be effective in the name of Jesus Christ. Father God, we thank you. We bless you. We adore you, O oh God. 
We magnify your name, O God, this day, O God, and this night, O God. Thank you, Father God, in Jesus' name. We're going to look at this scripture, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20, and verse 24. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And it says, For as many as are the promises of God in Christ, they are all answered, yes. So through him we say our amen to the glory of God. Can we have the next verse, um, 21, before we go to 24? Amen. But it is God who establishes and confirms us in joint fellowship with you in Christ and who has anointed us, empowering us with the gift of the Holy Spirit. 24. Hallelujah. Not that we rule like dictators over your faith, but rather we walk with you for the increase of your joy for your faith, you stand firm in your strong conviction that Jesus of Nazareth, the Messiah, is the Son of God through whom we obtain eternal salvation. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Father God, this scripture we are using to pray for the leaders, O oh God. Father God, this is for the leaders, O oh God, in the body of Christ, O oh God. He said, but it's God who confirms and makes them steadfast. We are praying that our leaders will be steadfast. We are praying, Lord, that you will establish them, O oh God. We are praying that you will consecrate them, O oh God. We are praying that you will anoint them, O oh God. And the anointing, O oh God, will be that, O oh God, that they will be endued with the gifts of the Holy Spirit, O oh God. Lord, we are asking, and even in all this, O oh God, that the leaders will not have dominion or lord it over, O oh God, the people of God, but rather they work as fellow laborers, O oh God, promoting joy in the people, O oh God, and helping the people, O oh God, to stand, O oh God, in the faith, O oh God. This is the prayer, O oh God, we pray for the leaders, O oh God. And to be able to do this, they have to be connected with you, O oh God. Therefore, Lord, we pray for the leaders, O oh God. The heart, O oh God, that seeks after you, O oh God. The heart, O oh God, that is tender towards you, O oh God. The heart that longs for you, O oh God. The heart, O oh God, that inquires of the Lord. Like David will inquire of the Lord. A heart that is Father God, ready, O oh God, to forgive and also to repent. Mighty God, this is our prayer for the leaders, O oh God. Hear our prayers, O oh God. Thank you, mighty God, because we prayed in Jesus' name. Lord, we now pray for revival. And we're going to look at Psalm 85, verse 6 for this one. Psalm 85, verse 6. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And the scripture says, Will you not revive us and bring us to life again, that your people may rejoice in you? Verse 7. Show us your loving kindness, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Father, this is our prayer, O God. As we ask for revival, O God, Father God, this starts with us, O oh God, because you say, revive us. Will you not revive us, O oh God? We need your revival, O oh God. Father God, stir up, O oh God, the heart, O oh God, the desire, O oh God, to pray, the desire to study the word, the desire, O oh God, to connect with the family of God, O oh Lord. Father, because so many have grown cold, O oh God, but Lord, we ask, will you not revive us, O oh God? Mighty God. That we may rejoice in you, Lord. Show us mercy and loving kindness, O oh God. Grant us your salvation. Father, this revival, we go to the land and we say, Lord, 
as you forgive us for our sins, O God. Revive, O God, this land. Revive, O God, the world. Let there be revival that goes with salvation of souls, O God. Almighty God, let your word become powerful. Let your word become effective. Let your word become effectual. Let your word become powerful, O God. As your word is spoken, O God, let there be conviction, O God. Let there be repentance, O God. Let there be salvation, O God. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, let there be no... Father God, limitation of any kind. Let there be no restriction to your word, O God. Mighty God, let your word be followed, O God, with signs and wonders, O God. This is your promise, O God, that in the last days, O God, you will pour out your spirit upon all flesh, O God. Let there be revival, O God, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, we thank you, Lord. We bless you, God. For such a time as this, O oh God, you have allowed us, O oh God, to see your grace and, Father, enjoy your grace, O oh God. But, Father, that will not take your grace for granted, O oh God. Thank you, Lord, O oh God. Even mighty God, we worship you for this night, O oh God. We thank you. We praise you. We worship you. We give you all the glory, all the honor, all the adoration, O oh God, for what you are doing and what you continue to do, O oh God, in our lives, O oh God, that you steer us up, O oh God Almighty, to love. You steer us up, O oh God Almighty, to seek your face like never before. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I don't know what you want to bring before the Lord tonight. Go to the Lord this moment and bring to the Lord your personal request. Ask the Lord to meet you at the point of your need. Whatever is going on in your life, we might not have prayed about it tonight, but tell God about it and we will be in agreement. Because whatever two or three of us will like, you know, tell God about in agreement, Bible says it's already done in heaven and it will be done for us. Hallelujah. With God, all things are possible. He's able. He's a God that hears and answers prayer. We have come to him tonight with our requests. And we believe as we have prayed that it is done in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> Father, we just thank you that you are a prayer answering God. And Father, we lift up our first responders to you, Lord, our doctors, our nurses, Lord, those that are on the front line, God. Father, who are laboring, Lord, and tirelessly, God. Lord, with those who are um, have tested positive, Lord, with the coronavirus and, and in various places, oh God. So Lord, we're praying your hedge of protection around them, Lord, and their families, God. Keep them safe, O oh Lord, from all hurt, harm, and danger. Father, we ask, O oh Lord, for a special blessing for each and every one of them, God. Strengthen them where they need it the most, God. Them and their families, Lord. Father, we just thank you and praise you, Lord. Lord God, that you hear us when we call on your name, God. King of kings and Lord of, of lords and Lord of glory. Father, we thank you and praise you. We bless you and glorify you in all things. You are worthy of all praise worthy of all glory and worthy of all honor it's in jesus name we pray amen and amen and amen god bless you have a great evening um keep in mind we have um noonday prayer tomorrow at noon um and that would be um, by via phone and facebook we also have prayer friday morning at 9 a.m that would be by phone we have prayer also on saturday morning um at 7 30 a.m and that shall be by Facebook and by phone. And we will see you then. God bless you all. Love you all. God bless. Bye-bye.